are the subject of the kingdom. Who are they? I want to hear from you. Many will come from the south and the east and the west. They will come all the way from nations around. But the subject of the kingdom shall be drawn out. Who are the subject of the kingdom? Everybody talk. It's your, it's your Bible. Let's do some uh, biblical exegesis here. The centurion. It was. There is something there that I want to bring out here in subject matter of the Holy Spirit, especially what concerns Holy Spirit in that scripture. But let's let's just talk about. What was Jesus, what did he mean when he, he said that uh, everybody will come from east and west and north and south, but the subject of the kingdom, who are the subject of the kingdom? Church folks, yeah, uh-huh. Yeah, believers, the Jews, right? I believe... It was just talking about uh, people that the kingdom was for. The subject of the kingdom. Just as the example that was shown to us, that was given to us, cited this afternoon. The, 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 the Jesus was talking to a woman who was asking for help and Jesus turned to her. Ah, and said, look, this miracle is, this food is just not for you. It's for the children of the kingdom. And so, the subject matter of the kingdom will be the people. The Bible said, I, he came for his people. But obviously, his people did not what? Accept him. And then he said, okay, fine. If you wouldn't accept me, let me go somewhere else where, where they will accept me. Right? So, he came to the people. The subject of the kingdom are those people that he actually came for and came to, to be with. His own folks that he felt that if coming this way, I will come to meet my people. But the subject matter, first of all, what you understand, the subject matter care less about it. They took it for granted. And he said, in, in Israel, I have never seen somebody whose faith is like this. What are you saying? Don't come to where I am. Say the word. What is it? It's called authority. I am a man under authority. If I said to this one, go, he goes. Come, he comes. Right? Do this, he will do it. So, there is no issue about it. So why would you come to my house? Just say the word. By the time you say the word, authority speaks. And things will happen. That's exactly what the Holy Ghost is all about. You can ask a question. I can ask a question. Everyone ask a question. Why is the church of God so cold today and why do we have the Holy Spirit but not active what is wrong with that Holy Spirit is he absent is he gone on holiday is he sleeping is he something happened why what is happening why is the Holy Spirit not engaging as of the old time what has watered down the power of the Holy Spirit or what has bring his power down a little bit in our churches that his operation has been so cold. And Now, understand something. Do you know the coldest place for Holy Spirit to operate is where is in your church where the people know you. 
And where you know them. That's the coldest place. The coldest place for the Holy Spirit to, to, to operate is where you have been for years and they have been hearing you and you have been hearing them. You have become familiar with them. And they have become familiar with your word. Now, take that energy to people who does have, have no knowledge of you, have not seen you before, only say a little bit of what to them, you see certain things happening. Right? The subject of the kingdom has missed it. Completely. They have become familiar with you. We all come in and out together. So, what's the big deal? But half of that energy, take it away. Move it completely far away. Alright? And you'll be amazed what the Holy Spirit will be doing. Right? Jesus went to Nazareth. And the Bible said he could not do much in Nazareth. Why? The subject of the kingdom said, who are you? We know you. Right? We are familiar with you. They will start asking questions. Is your father? Is this not Joseph's son? And they started. <laughs> the Bible said he looked at them and he marveled. And he would not do much among them. The, the, the subject of the kingdom will not understand the authority by which the Holy Spirit is operating. And one thing about the Holy Spirit is, is a man of authority. He takes and he gives. No compromise. Holy Spirit cannot compromise. He does not compromise. Now, so today, I want you to understand. When the power of God in, uh, started to walk with us in Pentecost time, it was a power of discipline. It was a power of that you cannot mess up with. It was a power that created fear in the heart of man. It was a power that you can't, hey, don't touch them. Don't go near that. Somebody has just gotten burnt. I don't think you want to repeat the same thing. But today, what's happening in the church? If there are like those discipline in those days in the church, the church will be in the right place. What is happening in the church today is Grace is okay. Grace, take it gentle and take it simple. It's not that big time. That's the problem. And the Holy Spirit is a man of authority. Now, when you say Holy Spirit, I want to use the word, the, 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 uh, you say Spirit or you say Holy. Let me use the Holy One to describe the Spirit. Because that is what it is. Holy Spirit is holy. Holy before it becomes spirit. And God is holy. And everything about him is holy first. <clears throat> is the church of God holy today? How holy are we? How much holy are we? So let's talk about the holy part of it that engages the spirit. It is the holiness that engages the spirit. Right? It's not vice versa. It's, it's holy and then spirit. So holy spirit. Divide them. Let's talk about the holiness first because it will be the spirit of holiness. Spirit of what? Holiness. Now, how is the spirit of holiness going to operate where holiness is not there? That is some of the problems we have in the church today. Right? It's okay. We, we, God has given us grace. He has given us gift. Think about all these gifts that are in the scripture. Do you know all those nine gifts that are in the scripture? And more gifts in all the scriptures we have talked about. Romans 12, 1 Corinthians chapter 14 and chapter 12 and all those things. All those gifts and powerful gifts there. 
they cannot be operated without holiness. And members, each member of the church must have them walk before the church is acting according to the word of God. Now, so here, as you are sitting down here now, as you'll have nine gifts of the Holy Spirit working, one, each of you having one gift at least. If you don't have it, so why, why are you talking about the Holy Spirit? What is it for? The Holy Spirit enters into you for you to sit down. To do what? You shall receive power after, after. The power is to make you move and become active for the kingdom. All right, so healing is that. And speaking in uh, interpretation of tongues, there Paul Apostle said, I speak in tongues more than you all. All right, uh, designing spirit is that. You have all those, those uh, power, power. There are nine gifts. Right? Which one is yours? Which one are you keen into that is edifying the church? Which one has God given to you to make your church grow? Which one do you have that somebody in the, your community will know that there is a woman there that has something that can help me? And they ask, is there any man in this kingdom whose spirit is in him? And he said, there's someone. He has the spirit of God. He could say the spirit of God in him. All right? They were looking for somebody in the kingdom. So when the pastor was talking about uh, Holy Spirit with socialism or socialization, or how I was just looking at this man of Daniel, he was, a, he was a man who was involved in everything. They were looking for solution in that kingdom. They could not find anybody else, but they said, there was somebody in this kingdom that can interpret your dream. The one who is, holy, who, who is working with the Holy Spirit is an interpreter of a dream. Which, whose dream can you interpret? Except you and I take the bull by the horn. Except we begin to actually locate problems and begin to have, go after problems and solve problems. We are joking. It's a joke. Yeah, speaking in tongues is okay, fine. But after you speak in tongues, it's a personal language, you know. Speaking in tongues is a personal language between you and God. Paul Apostle said, if everybody is we are in assembly and you are starting speaking in tongues without interpretation, he said, keep quiet. Because it's between you and him. And so when we speak in tongues, we will have interpreter. They will speak in, he said, when I get to the public, I prophesy. Prophecy means that I can speak in tongues in my room, but I can begin to prophesy. Prophe prophecy means also I'm downloading from the power of the spirit. All right? I may not be speaking in tongues, but I am also doing it powerfully. By the Spirit of God. Now, so let me understand, let me see say the, the reason why you and I are not effective in, in these days uh, in this day. Do this day is we are not having challenges in our lives that will keep us at work. How many people do you pray for personally? And you see transformation in their life. If, if the Bible said there are nine gifts, which one is yours that you are using to edify the church? Right? Our situation is the holiness part of the spirit is faulty. And since what described him is faulty, to work will be difficult. And it's a difficult challenge. So, let me uh, help us to look at the scripture in the book of Isaiah. <laughs> and I, I want you to understand 
the reason why tonight, just to welcome you, is a welcome address is to let you understand that what they have been telling us is big. It's a big thing. I've been hearing everybody talk. And I want to talk. And every time I, I, I hear them talk about the Holy Spirit, I ask a question. Then what's wrong? Right? Every time they describe this, I, I, I was hearing the experience of Pastor Chusey. I, when, I, when we go to revivals, we know operation of the Holy Spirit is just, it's not what you can do, it's him doing it. Right? So I ask, I haven't sat down here for two days, hearing this, I, my question is, then something is happening. So we are sick somewhere. And, and, and until we really know that we are sick and we need real solution, then it's a joke. And I don't want us to come in all the way to this convention and live the, the way we came. No, it's not more, it's, it's more than speaking in tongues. Right? After they received baptism of Holy Spirit, there were, there were actions. Actions. The life of those disciples started engaging the community. Just as you said. Right? And they were getting upset with them. And when you have the Holy Spirit with you, you will, be fight, you will become a fighter. There is no way you can have a Holy Spirit in you and, and you are quiet. You are gentle. No gentle man and no gentle woman. Because things will get you upset and you have to deal with it. The powers of this world are not your friends when you are operating under the powers of the Holy Spirit. They can cite you and they can deal with you. So we are fighters. Right? I don't know. Read it in the Art of Apostle. Right from Art of Apostle. The lifestyle of Paul Apostle. Or the, or the, at the beginning of the, of the power of the Holy Spirit, persecution heated the church. They say enough is enough. We thought Christ was dead. We didn't know that even though we kill him, you are going to come back again and put his blood on our neck. Stop it. The same way you must be aggressive when the Holy Spirit is operating in you. But Holy Spirit does not want the place that is dirty. It's not going to work. His nature is holy. Holy and is holy. And is so super holy. That's the reason why Jesus Christ said you must be perfect. As my father is in heaven is perfect. He said, but I can't be perfect. Who says so? Jesus said you must be perfect. It's not whether you like it or not. My desire is you must be perfect. He said, well, how, how then can I be perfect? Yes, guess what? It is the holiness part of it. That uh, we need to really work with. Isaiah. It says here. Chapter 38. I'm sorry. Chapter 35 verse 8. Let's read this. In a few verses. Isaiah 35 verse 8. If you get it. Read it. And you can also go to Isaiah chapter 63. I want to. to Read it, read it, read it well. And just know that those things that come out of God of love, mm -hmm. it will be named the highway of holiness. It will be named the highway of holiness. Yes? Evil-minded people will never travel. Evil-minded people will not travel through this road. It's the purpose of those who walk in God's way. <laughs> Fools will not walk there. Fools will not walk there. Lions will not lurk around the stone. Lions will not be there. Ferocious beasts will not go through it. No other dangerous that will be there. Only the redeemed. It will be called the highway of holiness. So why is uh, the Holy Spirit mute? He's on mute button. So see, in, in this day and age, you, what you see happening in this, in, at this time is that when the Holy Spirit is operating in one person, he concentrates on that person because that person obviously 
is, is listening to him or listening to her. So he said, okay, fine. Since, since you are listening to me, let me work with you. So he picks and cho chooses whosoever he desires. Before he picks you, he knows that you are, you are going to be an obedient child. So let me pick you and use you. Right? Because when the Holy Spirit starts working in one's life, there are many things he will take out of you. Many things. <laughs> we take them one after the other. As soon as Holy Spirit enters into you, the first thing he does is to break your mind and break you down to say, you have no mind of yourself, I control it. So you can't argue. Amen. Everything you start, you start living for, he starts controlling it. That's the only way he can use you. Right? You will be completely flatly say, look, have it your way. Right? Holiness. Isaiah chapter 63. I want us to read this scripture. These are the nature of um, the Holy Spirit. And we are having some issues. We are having some issues. Verse 15, 63, verse 15. And someone should go to Exodus 15, 11. Just write them down. So I want to pick them one by one and read about the nature of the Holy Spirit. The habitation of your holiness. Mm -hmm. Yes. Read it again. Look down from heaven, yes, and behold, uh -huh. from the habitation of the holiness of your holiness, and yes, of thy glory, and, uh -huh. where is thy seal uh -huh. and the strength uh -huh. and the sanding of the bowels of thy message towards me? Are there restraints? Everything that, that you need and I need, they are from the throne of holiness. The prayers we pray, all the desires of our heart that we are talking about the Holy Spirit helping us, is helping us from the throne of holiness. You cannot have holy or the spirit of holiness without involving a life of holiness. And you know, holy, holy, I call it holy, holiness. The H1 is holiness. Right? Hebrews chapter 12 is right there. Verse 9 and 12. Verse 9 to 10. It says it. What did it say? Hebrews 12. And we'll still come to Exodus chapter 15, by the way. Verse 11. Mm -hmm. who discipline us uh -huh. yes yes uh -huh. yes in his holiness in that so we might share in what in his holiness no discipline is enjoyable how do we share in his holiness how do we share in Jesus' holiness? It's right there. Because he disciplines us. Through his discipline, we can share in his holiness. How does, how does he discipline us? There are many things you want. I had the pastor said, sometimes the, your diet, if you will change it. <clears throat> yes, it's true. Sometimes you are eating some stuff. You say, don't, 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 don't eat that. The more you get to understand holiness, the more you understand the power of the Spirit of God. As you are going out, they will tell you, don't do that one. No. It, may be, it may not be bad. Right? It may not be a bad thing. 
every, every, other, every other person may be doing it. He said, what, what is bad in it? He said, no, no, there's nothing bad in it. But the point is, I don't want you to do it. He's a man of authority. Now, I don't know. I told you one time we were praying. I was praying with, the, with, uh, with this woman, spiritual woman, and we were praying. And, and I uh, had my sleep my slippers on in the sitting room. And she said, uh, uh, she, she didn't say much. She just took her own slippers and took it outside the door. Now, what does this tell me? You don't have to say it. Just act it. It's the only spirit sometimes will not say anything. It will just act and you follow. No question asked. If you are somebody who asks too much question, and that's his friend. So I took my own slippers. I put it outside. And then we started praying. <laughs> Do you know, as from that time, any time I have slippers on, I have to take it away from my room if I want to pray. What is, he said, what, what is that for? No, no. If she can do it, that means something is wrong with you. That is a respect for God. And so I must follow. Does he add to my faith? Yes. Does he remove from my faith? No. Am I, am I desiring to do better? Yes. Because the Bible said, you must aim to do better. You must be pursuing excellence. And you must be running after making it better than before. If not, what is the essence of improvement? Should I take, make that your, a doctrine to you? No. Is that for me? Yes. Right? So, I have taken that. Now, now what am I talking about? Holy Spirit. Spirit of holiness. Discipline will make you share in his holiness. That's the problem today. Christians don't want to go through discipline. You cannot understand Holy Spirit without allowing, allowing his nature to walk in you. Exodus 15 what did I say? Verse 11. Yes. Among the gods. Yes. Glorious in holiness. Fearful in praises. <laughs> Hallelujah. Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. We are uh, going to allow you to understand that this ministry God has given it to us to change our life and not become like others. You are not others. If you know Apostle Timothy you will know that he's a disciplined man. You don't know him. That's why some, 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 some people will talk, I'll just be laughing. <laughs> it's a man of no nonsense. If a person said no, it means no. You cannot say, uh, excuse me. What excuse me? Excuse me to do what? And if he says, this is what the Spirit of God told me, you cannot change him. So we all know him that, look, the waste of time, if you are begging, there is no committee to say to him that uh, that's not. He would have even done it. He will go to a place where, say, I want to do revival in two days. I want to do revival there. Everybody will be asking, but there is no preparation. Say, and so? 
No preparation. I said I'm going there. Whether there is light or no light, it doesn't matter. It will, uh, how many times has he used uh, vehicle uh, light to do revival? Headlamps. Okay, careless. Say, I said God said I should go there. You are, asking, you are telling me there is no preparation. Are you the one to prepare for him or what? He's a man of discipline and he hears from God. Those people, you can't play with them. They don't play joke with you. If you are so close to him, we children, we know this. Uh, uh, no, no, no. no. <laughs> you are a little distant. Way, but when you are in, in the house, you know this man is not. Uh, we will be even shivering, talking to him, want to ask him a question. Leviticus chapter 10, verse 10. The nature of the Spirit of God is holiness. Leviticus 10.10 10 says what? You may distinguish between holy and unholy. Between the unclean and clean. The power of the Holy Spirit is to make a, a dis differentiation and distinction between what is right and what is wrong. Between what is, what is holy and what is not holy. Between what is clean and what is not clean. Anywhere you see uncleanliness, Holy Spirit cannot operate. No matter tongue you are speaking, it will not operate. He says to Joshua, I can't go with you again. I can't. There's no way I can go with you. Yes, son, I have been fighting. You know, we have been, I've been with you all the time. But this, on this case, we, I can't go any further. Why, sir? Stand up on your, feet, on your feet. You don't need to say, I will show you. Somebody has taken a costing that irritates me in your camp. Fish him out. Or else, you're on your own. Unclean thing with the Holy Spirit is not going to be there. Do you understand why? Why we are asking and we are begging and we are saying, please, let the Holy Spirit have access to our means. Because there are a lot of things we are doing that irritates him. A lot. Right? Irritating him. And when he's irritated, no matter how much you, you are talking, you're on your own. That's the reason why the church today is so weak. Do you understand? We speak in tongues a lot in the church. Right. Guess what? After speaking in tongues, that individual that just spoke in tongues, by the time you know him, in two minutes, he's getting angry. Huh? He's getting angry. So I speak, I, I always ask drivers in Nigeria, I say, what happened to you? And you say you are you have holy spirit, but let them and let them get to start driving after the church, right? By the time they know it, they are already causing somebody out because the person dri drove <laughs> roughly, and they are pastors. I mean pastors. As as holy spirit had vacation just for two minutes of finished service. The nature of the Holy Spirit is a nature that numbs you dead. The same thing happens. You cannot know true Christians until you get them in their home, not in the church. A whole lot of our children don't follow us to church because we are hypocrites. They know when we get to church, we behave differently. But when we get home, is a different thing. So, how, what would you tell them to have you have them follow you to church? They know us more than we know ourselves. Yeah? Nature of the Holy Spirit. The watery part of it. And I want to encourage you tonight. I think most of the part of the things that has been said to us, they are the, 
the, action, the, the part that excites us and, and allow us to see action of the Holy Spirit. But the, the people that are talking, see, go behind the scene and see the life they are living. Because the Bible said, uh, he has no respect of a person. Right? Until you go back to their home, see how they are living their life. Until you go back to their home, see what is happening to them. Uh, before you can understand the operation of the Holy Spirit. What is the O letter there? Is obedience. Sacrificial obedience. Obedience with fear of God. What happened to Samuel in 1 Samuel chapter 10 verse 6 to 8? Understand the Holy Spirit came upon Saul. But how, and he said you, you will become another man. As a matter of fact, I want us to, to get one message from that scripture. 1 Samuel chapter 10. Yes. Yes. You will be turned into another man. Uh huh. And let it be. When this sign has come upon you, thou will do as occasion serve you. <laughs> That's the work of the Holy Spirit. When the the Spirit of God is operating you, you will do as occasion warranted. Right? You will be moved by an occasion. Something will happen. And any time, and when the, the Spirit of God moves in you, go ahead and do whatever it tells you to do. And that happened in the life of Saul. Right? As soon as the Holy Spirit enters into him, he says, you will be another man. Another woman. Not ordinary person. Another one. And you will be moving and as occasion demands on you. Right? So, that Spirit will move you and then once you move you, there's nothing you can do. You're moved. Right? But now, you see what happened? What, what happened to him? You all know the story. The man said, look, wait for me. There's going to be a sacrifice that we're going to come and do. Just wait. That was it. The instruction of the Holy Spirit is on obedience. It's a sacrificial obedience. So just wait. Don't worry about it. What happened to him? Pressure came on him. Demand came on him. Right? And he was losing ground because he was not moved by the demand of the people. And God specifically allowed the prophet to be late. He didn't come on time. Because God moves in his own time. Your time is not his time. So he deliberately allowed the, the man to be late. It was just a test. Can I work with this one or not? Because command is command. The man said, when I send him to go, he goes. I ask him to come, he comes. So God said, don't do anything until I get there. But the people moved on him and people start scattering from him. And the problem today is we don't want people to scatter from us. So we rather move in the, de in the demand of the people. We don't want them to talk that, down on us. We don't want them to say, ah, things are not working. Because that's what was, was happening. The, the, the soldiers were dispersing. The people were moving away. So why are we waiting until now? Bible said, and then he moved forward to do the sacrifice. As he was finishing it, prophet came. So, what have you just done? You have done foolishly. Right from there, God could no longer communicate with him. 